Can we get started? Well, I think we can get started. There's still somebody entering the room. Great. So uh, the room is getting even more crowded. Uh, um, one brief question. Can you hear me well at the back of the room? Awesome. Well, let's wait for another minute. A uh, warm welcome to our presentation, KPI Driven Product Data Strategy. And thanks very much that you've taken your time to listen to us. Uh, fantastic lectures here at Print Day. Yesterday, we listened to our Robin Johannes Sommer of Red Fresco, who presented a fantastic talk about ChatGPT and all the disruptive challenges that are on our doorstep, ringing the bell of the wall. <laughs> um, now, together with you, we would like to answer the question of how a effective or efficient product data management can be built and how you can boost your competitiveness. Uh, let us briefly introduce ourselves. Um, uh, my name is uh, Patrick Michael. I'm product data strategy and PIM consultant at HMMH. And as the title already says it, we accompany and consult our customers in view of holistic product data strategies and PIM implementations. And I do exactly the same thing like my uh, colleague Patrick. My name is Robin and this is Let's. <laughs> That's why we should get started right away. Maybe a few words on HMMA. With our leading Connect uh, Commerce, th our strap line, we've co accompanied our companies in digital transformation for 26 years now. And then we can get into Media 3's product uh, data value chain. First thing, um, we would like to provide you with an insight of what the product data value chain is, how we understand this value chain, and then we want to give you some business cases to show how KPIs are, how important they are for the implementation of a product data strategy along the value chain. Uh, the product data value chain. The first stage in our product data value chain is the onboarding stage. Uh, basically, the on onboarding stage includes the capture of product data in the target system. For most systems, this is uh, a PIM system, where the product data should be available as complete uh, as possible and with a high quality. The second stage is the enrichment phase. It contains the enrichment of product data with uh, additional product uh, attributes or assets such as product images or uh, uh, construction manuals and the like. Enrichment can have a positive impact on the customer experience. The more data we attach to a product, the easier the decision uh, to be taken by customers or shoppers at the front end in the channel. And the third stage in our uh, product data value chain is the management uh, stage. This is the organization and structuring of product data. So we want to create a single source of truth for the entirety of our product data with the aim of um, making product data available easily for our internal customers and for shaping business process in an efficient manner. And the fifth stage in our product data value chain is the distribution stage to various target channels, both print and digital channels. And the aim is to adapt the product data to the needs of the respective channels. Channel A, for instance, wants more other attributes than channel B or another amount of product images. And this is what we handled with the distribution stage. To give you a brief overview of the partners that we work with for all of these processes, you will have met many uh, of these uh, at the print day yesterday and today. In the onboarding stage, we uh, actually work with Wondot. Um, Wondot, we ha they provide an intelligent uh, platform for onboarding, the syndication of product data for the respective uh, target system, usually it's PIM. In the enrichment stage, we work with AX Semantics and Retresco. Retresco yesterday, a fantastic presentation, as Robin said, by Mr. Sommer. 
the automatic product tax generation to efficiently um, provide uh, product tax for the target channels, then product management, efficient product uh, management with PIM solutions, um, such as uh, presented here by ContentServe and Akineo, and last but not least, the distribution stage where we basically uh, create unrivaled customer experiences, both uh, digitally and uh, on in the print channel with our partner, Print. Great. Uh, thanks very much. We will now uh, talk about the KPI-driven product data strategy and its development. We have created Create Care is our strap line. We support you to implement innovative solutions and we're available as an uh, implementation partner. We stand by your side and we love what we're doing and would also like to support you as a long-standing partner, as a faithful partner for products, for shops, CM or whatever, CRM. How can we actually ensure holistic consulting along the product data value chain? Four formats have become established. This is the health check. This is a 360 degree analysis of your data processes and structures. For each activity of the value chain that we presented to you, we have an expert teams at our company that work hand in hand with our partners uh, to come up with the best solutions for you to obtain maximum value creation. So we actually take a multidisciplinary uh, view at your processes. Look at where your challenges lie, probably identify potentials, clusters uh, them for you. And based on this, we actually develop recommendations for action for you. Once we've developed these recommendations, we can actually do a joint scoping workshop. In the scoping workshop, the lay down the potentials that we've identified in our health check and reconcile them with your uh, corporate uh, targets. Uh, look at which challenges uh, are particularly pressing for you in your processes, structures or data, which we have a prioritized look on. So we create a list of priorities, define targets and also work out KPIs with you with which you can measure these targets that allow you to say where do we stand now and uh, what is the progress that we've made so far. And with these clusters and priorities, we then do a joint strategy workshop. And there we look which expert team with which expertise is the right one to rise up to this challenge. So we draw up a plan with which you can actually um, rise up to your challenges as quickly as possible. But as we just said, we not only do consulting and we not only want to be a partner by your side as a service provider, we also look after the operational part together with our partners. So we implement the solutions offered by our partners, configure them and customize them for you, for your processes and your structures. Exactly. The product data value chain, product uh, uh, enrichment, uh, data management distribution, these are the focal points we mentioned before. Underlying in the background, uh, the various partial tasks in um, that are needed for the business uh, transfer. We implement data uh, governance process. We actually consult you and um, support you with your PIM DAM strategy, do data analyses for you. And this is all uh, in line with the tasks to be performed along the value chain. Now, this is provocative. We're the last uh, lecture between you and the lunch break, and we're not suggesting that we should leave early for lunch, no. Befittingly, we came up with a case um, that uh, actually focuses on uh, the barbecue season. And uh, we want to give you a practical insight into our theoretical approach. And this is uh, why we've uh, brought along this business case. And this is why Sophie is here today. Sophie is age 34. She is the um, uh, head of the e-commerce department at the DIY company. 
and she approaches us with the following uh, brief. Uh, she has a problem that she can't get her product data online fast enough for the upcoming barbecue season. This is her first challenge. She approaches us and in line with our holistic uh, consulting approach, we do a, a joint health check. So we look at Sophie's data structures and processes. As a first step, we focus on the processes, then look whether we can identify um, bottlenecks, inefficient processes or gaps in the strategy, then we actually um, take a, a multidisciplinary glance with our experts and partners and quickly identify that the product data management takes too much time. Maybe a host of suppliers or too many products that need to be onboarded, a lack of resources or whatever. I think we are all aware that these are challenges that we've all come up against before. In the second step, we then look at the processes, uh, try to involve all of the parties involved uh, with the product data at Sophie's and from the management down to c customer care, marketing, and see whether there are any bottlenecks to identify, identify all of the challenges to get this 360 degree view. Then we quickly see that the marketing cannot capture the product descriptions fast enough, maybe for a lack of resources, the inconsistent data because supplier data need to be onboarded in no time so that the products remain saleable and this actually affects the data consistency. The multidisciplinary uh, glance at the data quality by our experts then tells us that at Sophie there is no um, consistent data model. The database is, is insufficient. Nobody feels uh, responsible for data clusters and this actually causes a lot of problems. And if you think that Sophie's only problem is that she can't get her product data online fast enough, we'll see at first glance when uh, you watch the shop um, that uh, this is the uh, gas uh, uh, grill uh, model X just one image so there's only one visual uh, possibility to, to form an opinion on this product then the article description is also pretty poor just one sentence and then it says charcoal grill although it's supposed to be a gas grill no features mentioned and uh, to compare with other grills to really form um, uh, an informed opinion and Sophie wants to actually um, uh, uh, have 220 euros for the, such a grill. This is doomed to fail. But uh, we want to actually um, uh, show you the positive sides that help pos uh, Sophie to get things right again. The recommendations for actions are just a short selection, high level, bird's eye view, so to speak. But in reality, we drill a lot deeper. We do deep dives. But just to let you know um, which concepts could help Sophie. This is data, govern data governance. Uh, improved cooperation between various departments. So we really look at the various departments that are involved uh, with uh, product data and what is the communication like between the colleagues. Maybe there's a potential for optimizing this uh, communication. Maybe formats can be found to um, improve the exchange amongst uh, colleagues so everybody understands who's in charge of which part of the product data. And then together with our customers, we find uh, and data cluster owner, so to speak. A data concept um, uh, would be recommended to Sophie. Definitely a concept of a consistent data model. This was one of the three challenges we came across. And um, then attributes by an external service provider like uh, us, for instance. We have a team of 50 people who only look at this. Uh, this means at enriching with attributes, uh, creating consistent attributes. So that uh, uh, you actually end up with texts where you uh, have a gas uh, grill uh, as a headline and a charcoal grill in, in the image. 
Then the health check. Um, this is for the time needed to bring a product online. Um, the onboarding process uh, could be automated and text generation could be automated by Sophie. And a factor that must not be neglected is the education and training of raising awareness uh, amongst uh, employees about the importance of data consistency because many are unaware how um, inconsistent data impact sales impact uh, competitiveness well a health check and now let's have a look how um, we actually can create uh, measurable targets um, on the basis of the recommendations for actions uh, that we suggested to Sophie so we have identified Sophie's challenge, we've developed the recommendations for action and now we're developing the KPIs together with Sophie so that she can constantly check her progress. The first KPI is uh, time to market. We identified a deficit. Uh, it takes Sophie six weeks currently to actually get her product data online um, to be able to display them on the various channels. Suppliers uh, actually supply this later, three weeks uh, to the beginning of the barbecue season. So Sophie can only go live three weeks after the barbecue season has started, so she loses a lot of sales. So we defined a KPI, the reduction of the uh, time between product entry by suppliers to going live in um, uh, online shops. So we wanted to bring down the time by 50% from six weeks to three weeks to be able to actually sell the products at the beginning of the barbecue season. So the resulting KPI is time to market. So this needs to be reduced. Then the uh, um, action we did used is an automatic uh, or automated uh, supplier onboarding because uh, because of the sheer amount of data we can save most time here of course there would be other measures available that we could work out based on this target but as a first step we should try to reduce uh, the time um, of onboarding by 50 percent with an automated system the second kpi that we worked at with sophie is the automation degree the challenge or the def deficits that we identified uh, lie in the manual effort for producing product texts. And this means uh, we have a huge source of mistakes when uh, product texts are captured manually and there are also high costs attached to it as well. And the uh, product texts are not current or not current enough because we can't update them accordingly. So the target we defined with Sophie is um, increase of the automation degree uh, by at least 50% towards the end of the year. This saves time costs and this also improves the time to market because the products uh, can be sold quicker at uh, the stores. The KPI is here, um, increase the degree of automation by at least 50%. And the uh, um, action um, or the recommended action would be an automated product text generation. And the third KPI is the quality of data. And, uh, the, on the product page, we got a feeling for uh, the quality, the poor quality of the data. We found that the data quality in the range of grills is around 30% and that there's no quality assurance, no workflows, no rules. And uh, for Sophie, uh, the most important thing was to actually get the product data online uh, as quickly as possible. The quality was not so important. So our target was to increase the data quality to 80% over the next three months. And the resulting KPI was uh, the number of complete data and correct data in one data set. And the resulting measures would be the introduction of a data governance concept with the clear responsibilities for products and product categories. Then uh, laying down data quality rules. When can a product be uh, put online? Which attributes must be available to do so? And the uh, general optimization of some workflows.
Well, thank you very much, uh, so much for scoping and uh, setting targets. We've developed measures for Sophie. And with these measures, uh, Sophie's uh, can go home and uh, look forward to getting things right for the next barbecue season. So up to 80% um, with an automation degree, a reduction of time to market by 50% over the next six months um, um, through the automated onboarding of data and the degree, uh, an increase of the automation level for text generation to 50% um, with data governance. Exactly. This is uh, what we've planned to do for Sophie. Let's um, imagine we're right in uh, uh, at the beginning of the season. The time to market has been reduced by 50%. The data quality has been pushed and the automation degree or the level has also been increased. And then um, the product appearance also works fine. Uh, this is again the gas grill Model X, but we can see that the, the shopper sees many more attributes to form an opinion about the product. And uh, we can see various sites how uh, yummy the meat could look like uh, to uh, provoke the neighbors. We have a product description with three bullet points containing the most important features for this grill. So shoppers can compare grills. And then we've got an emotional product description that we generated in automated fashion with even more details. And now probably the price at 220 euros makes more sense for shoppers. You can justify this price a lot better. Now Sophie is ready. The season is on the doorstep. This was an abstract uh, um, practical example. Uh, showing which KPIs or successes our customers were able to achieve will be demonstrated in, by two cases now. Case uh, one is Kika Liner. This is a furniture dealer from Austria. This is a furniture retailer. Uh, they approached us uh, to with the briefing to actually bring down the time to market to uh, three days. Oh, they, they they said uh, three days. So, and again, we saw there must be a bottleneck. What did we do? We actually uh, did the holistic approach, found measures, and uh, identified that the two KPIs are relevant: the optimization of workflows between the departments, the development of workflows, processes the generation of uh, data quality gates so uh, uh, they have consistent data and the introduction of the PIM dam system content serve uh, enabling Kika Liner to uh, properly manage their data. Uh, time to market we achieved, we were able to bring this, uh, to reduce it by 98%. So now Kika Liner only needs uh, uh, 30 to 60 minute to onboard products. I think this is a huge uh, product f um, d success for Kika Liner. And another example is uh, our customer Hagebau DIY. At Hagebau, the uh, challenge was uh, to create a consistent data um, base for the online, for the new web shop. It was a very tight timeline we were given uh, with the aim um, and uh, the, uh, the hybrid uh, editing for texts, so an automated uh, text generation. We have uh, Ach uh, achieved an automation level of 78%. At the uh, time of the case, uh, 7,000 of 9,000 uh, product texts uh, were already generated automatically. Why only 7,000? What about the remaining 2,000? Well, we had data quality problems, which we could not actually um, do away with. And the remaining texts were still uh, generated manually. But in future, we will make uh, actually we'll increase this uh, percentage to 100% and uh, actually auto generate
generate uh, 9,000 out of 9,000 product texts automatically. These were two practical cases. This is a brief um, overview of other customers from the furniture, from the fashion industry, other customers from DIY and from the consumer electronics segment. Uh, just to let you know with which customers we have already uh, pursued this approach successfully. And uh, this was it from us. I hope uh, you were able to learn some lessons from uh, this lecture and enjoy lunch. Ja, jetzt ist Zeit für Fragen. Ähm, wir haben sonst da hinten auch noch einen Stand aufgebaut. Da können Sie uns auch mit Fragen ähm, weiter durchlöchern, falls danach noch was kommt. Ähm, aber jetzt gerne raus, wenn noch was quer liegt. Wahrscheinlich so. Das sieht gut aus. Ich weiß jetzt nicht, ob das dafür spricht, dass der Vortrag gut war oder. Nee, aber gut, alles klar. Vielen Dank. Danke. Okay.